to Megathea Builder Worlds. This is a Necromunda build. Yes, it's been some time since I've been down in the sump and under the underhive of Necromunda, under Hive Primus. Uh, last time, of course, we had the huge mammoth build of my Enforcer's Sump Precinct, um, which was pretty big, it covered several videos and took a long time. I've totally got into the idea of life on the sump now and I'm going to have a, a series of, of other sump related bit scenic pieces including little islands with uh, hovels on and all sorts of other things too out on the sump but this video is going to be about sump vehicles in this case I'm going to make a sump fishing vessel and like last time I used a Playmobil roll on roll off ferry this time I'm using a Playmobil fishing vessel so I'm hoping this isn't going to take too long. I need to take this kids plastic toy bought off eBay for about 8 or 10 quid and turn it into a piece of Necromunda terrain. This is going to go along with uh, a sump board uh, that's going to have a fisherman's, uh, sump fisherman's kind of like dwelling or fishery or something on it. Um, but I'm going to do the boat this time round and that next time. I have also got some other boats that I'm going to produce. I'm not necessarily going to put all these into videos because, uh, you know, when you've seen a couple of boats, you don't need to see them all. But I, for, to make those, I've gone and got myself some kits from Sarissa Precision. Um, I've got this sand pan, uh, which looks like actually it's laser cut cardboard rather than laser cut MDF. Um, I've got this uh, retro American. Uh, Everglade airboat which is just gagging for it basically that's totally going to be made into some vehicle and I've also got a Far Eastern Type A Japanese landing craft from World War 2 because I think that will make quite an interesting thing as well so I'm going to mess around with those as well um, uh, they'll either appear in one kind of like bonus video of all three together or they'll just appear on some uh, sump board at some point or another right let's crack on with this model. Let's take a quick closer look and then I think I'm going to have a go at deconstructing it. Hurrah! Come on! Alright, I'll make the model now. So here it is. This is my Playmobil fishing boat. Um, as you can see it's kind of boat shaped already, uh, it's got a lot of features we're going to want one way or another. So to give us an idea of how big this model is, um, we need to go over to our mate Ubiquitous Orlock. Here he is, standing on the deck there, or maybe on the side. So as you can see obviously a Playmobil figure is much bigger than a Necromunda figure, um, so I'm going to need to do a few things to make this model work for Necromunda but it shouldn't be too tricky, I hope. The first thing we have to do, I think, is take it apart. I'm gonna lose all these bits and pieces for the moment, get an idea of how it goes. I think what I'm mainly gonna do is aim to fill in more deck around here, but I still wanna have a cavity here for dropping the catch into, and I think it needs some kind of catching device with uh, uh, the catch of the day. And then around the back, I'm probably, again, gonna fill in the back here. Might have a bit of engine kind of stuff, but, if this is the bridge of the vessel, the floor needs to be a lot higher. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do first of all. Going to de spend a few minutes deconstructing, find out how it comes apart, and then um, uh, we're going to build it up again. Very cool. All right, I've got most of the uh, unnecessaries stripped off the boat. This is what we've got left with. I was going to try and take off the deck and bits and pieces, but frankly, it doesn't really need to. This is what I'm going to work with. Um, uh, I'm going to take this here fishing boat, a nice Playmobil one, and turn it into something grim, dark and suitable for the sump under Hive Primus. Which means, right now, even at the start of this video, and I know you've missed it, it's time to go. Digging through the cack! Oh yes, it is time to go digging through the cack, but we're not going to go digging through the cack in a little fine detail kind of digging through the cack going away. We're going to go digging through the big cack. Actually, it's not really cack, it's not really fair, call it cack. We're going to go digging through the spruce box, <laughs> all the stuff that hasn't been made yet, all the bits of what we got in here. Um, Imperial landing platform, neck from under, 
uh, outposts, you know, fortification things. Uh, we've got um, uh, containers, probably not be used in. Um, we've got Orky Mech Boys bits. He says he knows they're in there, but he can't actually see them. Here we go, big Mac Boys bits there, little Mac Boys bits as well. Um, we've got uh, the door set, we've got barricades and all sorts of stuff. We've got bits of Adeptus Mechanicus stuff. Um, so, yeah, there's plenty to go digging through, but big time. I need to see what I can fit onto this model to start making it look like a Necromunda fishing vessel. So, um, here we go. We're going to go digging through, diving through some spruce first of all. Going to wield the clippers, start the cutting, and see what fits best of all. Going to dry fit it first, then we're going to stick it on, and then we'll have to go digging through the cack probably a second time to find the small details too. So, let's go have a look at these different sprues and see what we can find. Right then, stuff, cack, let's go. do that for a minute. Orky, I'm thinking deck first of all. Um, oh God. Well, actually, a lot of these handrails, these would be quite cool. Well, see, what would be really handy, what would be really handy right now is if I had a pair of clippers. What haven't I got? A pair of clippers. Stop the video, find some clippers. Clippers! Okay. So like I was saying, actually for some of these, I like these handrails. So we can set off there a minute. I mean they're a bit chunky and industrial, but what I do like about this model is it's got a nice flat bottom. So it will sit on the table very well. I'll, have, I'll add a little base to it with some sump water around it. See, we're clipping some of these off and then some of those on. Oh yeah, look at that. They can be made to fit on there. That's pretty neat, okay. But that doesn't help get me any further with the decks. But I wonder if I could bend it, heat it up and bend it maybe around that corner. Bit of a bend in there. Um, but that doesn't help me with decking. Right, okay, so Roberto's in mind, I need to find more of those. Um, that's quite cool. That's what flooring from the floor. I wonder if I can use that somewhere. So it's all right digging through the cack when you've got actual cack boxes, but when it's still on the sprues, you have to waste your time cutting it all off. Don't even know if I can get it appearing on screen. Look, there we go. I have to get myself another one of these fortresses because what I haven't done is actually used it as a stronghold. Right, okay. Put that to one side. See, that might be quite cool. Cut to fit in there, maybe. That might be alright. That'd be good, but no. Or across the deck. Now, oh, now. <laughs> Look at that. Are we getting that? Look at that. If I cut down here and cut that off and cut down. This side, that metal grill will slide right in there. Wicked, okay. And then that would sit about here. Give a bit at the back. I might then bung some engine stuff down there. Oh God, what can I use for that? I have got the cack from the spray bottle challenge. That's a bit of it. I mean, uh, the spray bottle stuff is a, a real steal. I mean, I could use some of that, but I could possibly use that as part of an engine. Down there, maybe, I don't know. Fiddle around with that. Not happy with that idea, but I do like that. I could cut, definitely cut that, slide that in. <laughs> and that is just sprue cack, which might also be able to be cut and fit. Cut and fit that across there. But I want this to be open to have fish, drop fish in there. I need to cover that up. Oh god, I'm not, not good anywhere. Um, what else we got? Stronghold doors. Mm. 
None. Um, now, I do definitely want a fish catching device or moving device, and this this is the Orc uh, Mech Boy Sprue. And I'm thinking this crane because there is a craney kind of thing on this chap. The problem is, is the teeth are open. I want I want to. Well, so I'm either going to use this one or I'm going to use this one. This might be a bit more ramshackle and yeah, mounted here on the bow or mount it up there to drop. Yeah, oh, okay, we're going to go with that. Uh, so we've got handrails, we've got some deck bits there, we've got nothing to go in this space here yet. And I definitely need to fill in there, get rid of those holes and cack down there. And these need covering over. I need more space actually to stand figures as it goes. Um, that's pretty key because uh, there's going to be space all in the back deck here, that'll be fine. Um, but yeah, here and here will be handy if I had. Uh, uh, yeah, that'll be good if I covered something up to hold figures there. Alright, okay. Keep thinking. Alright, so I've cut this bit out. Um, I'm now trimming down this side here. I'm going to trim down this side here so they'll fit into the bridge of the vessel. I'm not going to chop it all off though because I only need to cut down about here, I think. So uh, we'll see how we go. Cut that out, fit that in, slot that in, that'll be alright. I think and that will give me a decent height deck with well, hopefully a bit of a gap at the back here. Um, yeah, keep going. Okay, there we go. Look, that's the floor plate cut down. Hopefully, that's going to slot. Look at that, you beauty. Straight in there. I just need to take a tiny bit more off either side of that, and that will butt right up against the uh, bridge there which is really neat doesn't often work out something just really perfectly but actually for once these things completely line up this bit here which I've cut off over the, the back bit where ubiquitous orc is standing fits absolutely plumb perfectly on the front here I mean this is just an absolute gift so um, that's definitely going to get stuck on there which gives a platform for a dude to stand on in front of the guy who's driving the boat, which I reckon would really annoy him. I know it would really annoy the hell out of me if I was piloting a vessel like this, um, but that's quite cool. Um, and either we can then mount uh, our crane type affair on here, which is what my favourite thing. I'm going to cut this bit off here, but then I'm going to be able to mount my fishing gear on there, and I'm going to have an open part here for dropping the, the uh, catch down inside the boat but I still want to put um, flooring over this bit here so there's more place for figures to stand and also want to floor the foredeck too um, so I'm going to keep looking for CAC um, I'm, at the minute I'm working on ideas for the, the back area the, around the bridge uh, I want to do something in this cavity where the, the engine is what I've done so far then um, I'm just trying to get some light on that is I've got here uh, the bulldozer front of one of the Adeptus Mechanicus kind of uh, loader, crane loader thingies, which sits in there really nicely. Um, problem is, is when I put my floor that I want to use in there, you're not going to be able to see much of it at all, even if I paint that up. But then I thought, oh, well, I'll have a cunning plan. So what I'm going to do, using one of my little LED holders, I'm going to place, stick that inside here, and then I'm not going to stick this floor piece in. I'm going to put a strut across underneath there to support it, and then I'll be able to place that on top there, and then I'm going to get enough light there, I think with stuff painted, uh, to get some light glowing through and be able to see some engine. I might take out some of these this grid. Um, because, you know, the figure ain't going to fall through it. So I'm going to clip out a few bits so we can see a bit more engine down there, which would be quite neat, I think. Um, that would be a nice little solution. We've got enough room still for the figures to stay around the back. I don't need to worry about this gap. We can see into the engine space and that kind of thing. Um, alternatively, I could pull this actually back here. Um, and then we get lots of light coming through at the front in the, in the bridge, which would be quite cool. But nevertheless, either way around... 
Um, I think I'm going to light up there and I'm going to put a few more engine bits down here so when you look in that space we've got an engine on top of the uh, LED holder I'll put some other bits as well so then all I have to do is pull my LED out which of course would be fiddly because I've got big fat fingers don't need to take the battery out uh, gotta work out a way If I did that at the right height, that could even be the thing that holds the. That could be the thing that holds the thing. Up. Well, this Mech Boy sprue is turning out to be a bit of a gift, to be quite honest. Uh, I don't actually recall what, look, looking at you know what any of it's going to do, but um, apart from the fact that some of the, the tools are ridiculously big, how big is that adjustable spanner? Look at that bloody silly. Um, but I don't know what these things are for, but they're definitely going to come off and go inside here and become part of the engine that's quite neat digging through the cack is a piece of cake when it's all kind of like attached to a sprue and all in the same place keep looking though i want other enginey bits right well as is often my way when i'm doing this kind of thing i flit around as i come across different bits of junk rather than kind of like stick to one part so i'm still doing the uh, engine but um, I've got one of these corner railings pieces from the outpost, the, the gang fortress thing. And, and you know what, ever since I saw this, I, I thought it was absolutely gagging to be the prow of a vessel. So, cut back, trimmed up. That's going to go on there. Real nice. Act as a kind of like a prow point where we're going to be able to mount a harpoon or something like that. So, uh, now, tonight I'm in the, my office. Uh, not a workshop. Just because my workbench in the workshop is full of red wall abbey that's all black and waiting for paint. So, um, I'm working on various bits and pieces on my sump uh, fishing boat. Uh, first thing I'm doing tonight is taking this piece of plastic card. I'm going to cut it to fit it over this hole here so I can then fit this orky... Um, crane rig thing because this is going to be the thing that they lift the catch into the boat with um, so that's literally what we got here uh, one mil thick possibly one and a half mil thick um, plastic card sharp knife sharpie to market he says diving into his desk drawer find the sharpie not doing any measuring just going to offer the plastic up to the hole Actually, that is pretty much the right thing to do. I'm going to go that way, man. And I want the whole thing to cover the tyre hatch, so just about there. Take knife. And cut. So there's me thinking, I need a harpoon, I need a harpoon to go on the front of this fishing vessel, what can I use? And <laughs> Of course I've got a ton of um, Cahadron overlords in uh, waiting to be made for an Age of Sigmar army, just for fun. I'm just going to use the sky hook that's on here, because uh, it's kind of harpoony really. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to mount it on, but um, this Arcanaut frigate is going to have to have the sky cannon because the sky f harpoon the sky hook both parts are about to become part of my sump fishing vessel <laughs> thank you very much little arconauts now the other thing that i am um, thought about for this model is the fact that i don't just want it I want it in, in action, I want it going on doing something. So I just so happen to have some screamers of cinch. Here we go, check these out, these babies. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, they're like great big flying manta rays, although mine are going to be manta rays in the sump water. Um, so I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to hang it up, I think, from the uh, 
the crane device that it's being lowered into or could be turned around and lowered into the vessel um, I don't know which one to use though right so I've decided to extend the front bit here um, with a lift plate I'm going to cut the back bits off there so that sits flush there and the other bit of the uh, platform that I used to make the back on here I'm going to actually extend the roof of the bridge thus so I'm going to super glue that on um, and then that way there also on top of the, the bridge I've got this ancient fuel tank from uh, the um, original Hellhound from the Imperial Guard from many years ago which is a lovely little bit of gear double two pieces of white metal that's going to go together and I'm going to mount that above the bridge as well I think that'll look quite cool so um, that's definitely going to go up there so I'm going to stick that on there and uh, see how we go I'm probably going to cut this back a uh, bit off there because it obviously doesn't need to match up to the uh, walkways that it would join on normally so let's stick that on and see how that works and my biggest issue at the moment is the fact that there's still an awful lot of Playmobil boat here, which is fine. I'm quite happy with that. After all, I want it to look like a fishing boat. But one thing I've got to do is make it look more grim dark, more 40k, and a little less Playmobil. So um, um, I'm coming up with various things. This is quite a cool thing. I've got a hand railing here. Uh, I don't know where it's from. I can't remember what model it's off. But I think I'm going to go in here. It's going to go in the doorway there. That's going to sit in there quite nicely. Give me some a grill over the front of the uh, um, the bridge there. Um, I'm using a bit of sprue. That's going to go across underneath there to here. So I've got a bit more of a walkway. It's going to fill up part of this uh, area down there. Which is obviously where the fish are going to get dropped into. Or whatever, whatever the hell constitutes fish in the sump. So that's quite nice. I need some control stuff. I need to find um, something to cover up this hole here. I don't even know what that was for. I think probably a life ring. Um, and some other bits platform wise. And just generally some 40k ness, grim darkness to go along the side of the boat and various other places to make this, yeah, more Necromunda and less Playmobil. So. Uh, for the second time in this video, just to make up for the fact I haven't done very much of it recently because I've been building with XPS foam, let's go digging through the cack. And first up, we've got a couple of cack boxes. And again, it's that thing where we're digging through the cack where I really have no idea what I need. I need control panels to go in the bridge. Um, some yeah, I mean, that's all just that is it actually genuinely stuck together, which is not good anyway. Uh, chains and hooks might be actually better, I think, on here. Yeah, maybe possibly. Uh, I might not actually use this one. Um, I need control panels, I need. Um, oh, I don't know what I need. I just need stuff to make this vehicle, this vessel, look more 40k. That's quite nice. So I'm going to be use that ladder on the back. Uh, I've got so much stuff here. I reckon if I just made everything that I've got, I could produce a ton of stuff for. Necromando. I need to get back and build more stuff. Well, after we've built the ship, we're going to build the fish, fisherman's residence, the island that it comes from, out on the stump. Uh, I do actually have literally no idea. This is not staged at all. This is not kind of like I know what I'm looking for. I'm really not. I'm just looking for stuff that will inspire me. Actually, that might be. Got to find a mount for the sky hook for the harpoon to go on the front. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that.
until we unpack it all and then decide there's nothing there and then put it all back again. I just need something I don't know what I need. Riveted plates off an old old battle wheel wagon wheel. That'd be cool. Right, so we've done some cack digging. And we've added some bits. Uh, now I've got my crane here. Got to add a hook to it. Uh, I still haven't worked out a way of mounting my uh, harpoon gun on the front. I don't want to do it just like that. I want something a little bit kind of like bigger. Just going to zoom in, in there. I want something a little bit better than just plonking it on the front of the, the prow. Uh, I've got various cack down here in the bilges where the... Um, uh, fish are going to end up. We've got some fuel cans here around this side. Um, we've added the old resin bit of stuff. We've got some kind of like um, plates with rivets. I'm pleased with the engine now. The engine's all pretty cool. Remember, that's going to have an LED in there. Um, I've got a steering wheel. I can't even remember where I, that came from. Steering wheel and, and bits and pieces. So it, it's kind of coming on. Uh, by the time I then put. Whoops. The roof on, which has got that fuel tank. I've now gone and got a spotlight that would have come with one of these toys anyway. Uh, a classic bit of old rhino there. That's going to go on the top. Go on, you can fit on there. Click. That's going to go on the top there. I've got a suitable ladder somewhere we did have i did have a suitable ladder somewhere i've got a suitable ladder where's the fucking suitable ladder there's the suitable ladder which is also going to go probably on the back like that that will look pretty cool um we're kind of getting there it's it's, it's coming on quite nicely we're, we're taking form now um i'm getting more and more 40k i'm going to clip off some more of these edge bits um, and probably place a few handrails in a couple of places, maybe. Um, that will help with the look, especially if I go with some of the ones with barricades on, that kind of thing. But I'm jacking in for the night now, I'm going to bed. Oh, so this is where we're at right now. Um, model's coming along quite nicely. It's... Uh, Still looking quite plain with Billy though. This stuff down here is um, all the contents of the digging through the cack. As, as you can see, quite a lot of tiny little bits, plates, rivet bit plates, um, nuts and bolts. This is all the detail kind of things. What I'm working on at the minute is I want to come up with some kind of way of making this crane work with a big ass hook on it so I can be dragging one of these bad boys out of the water with it. I'm probably going to have another one lying around in the bilges where the fishermen have captured one already. Uh, not quite sure I'm going to fit it in, mind you. So we're going to go for lots of little detail. I did find myself, I thought I had an orca, a Gorka Morka harpoon system, but it's not. It's a, it's a rocket launcher, which isn't quite the same thing. I wanted to mount that out on the bow. So I'm still probably going to go with this sky hook from the Hadron Raiders. Find a way of mounting that. It might go quite nicely one way or another. I've got side rails um, certainly going to extend I think around the front on each side on the bow um, and I've just got lots of little details lots of things I'm going to put in the cab uh, here's a knife there in a scabbard and I love the guns the old styly guns from the croup I think I'll have them hanging up somewhere Inside, there's a radio aerial and various other bits and pieces. So, 
Well, it looks safe to see what we can put together. And uh, turn this into a more lived in, grim dark vessel. To give it a go, see what we can come up with. So this is rapidly becoming one of these models where I reckon I'm going to be adding way too much detail from a gameplay point of view, but it will look pretty cool painted up. Here I've just added a bunch of tools from the Orc Mac Boys kit for the ship's engineer just down in that kind of like bilges area there. No need really for it, but you know, the uh, white stuff you can see all over, it's bicarbonate of soda which hopefully is reacting with super glue in a few places. A can give us a rust and B helps solidify the bond, especially on the two metal railings here and here. Uh, and I'm gonna use it to kind of just junk up the whole thing. Uh, what else we got? Uh, knife in here now, stuck on the side and there's in the bridge itself little radio on the dash over here um, you can see the detail in the engine here quite nicely uh, with the LED holder here we can read green LED in there which will light up that whole area <coughs> with the covers on it which is quite neat so there will be enough green glow coming out of that when the whole model is going so do we quite nice keep adding more details all right so harpoon guns done there we are. that's the uh, harpoon gun so you could just about see in there the Victorian deck mount which works really nicely and the back end of an orc slugger from where I thought we go second edition so it's a nice harpoon on the front of that uh, that's gonna go really well with the hook that I'm making to hold them the uh, sump rays. Okay, so we've got most of the model done now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out a base from hardboard and uh, mount the model on the base and put some sump water around the edges of it. Maybe some kind of like ray fins and various other things too. Um, just gives you that little bit of extra room to do some modelling which will make the model, tie that model into the sump theme a bit better. I use polyfilla to make some port around the base of the boat and that gives me something to paint. And then I'll be able to spray the prime the whole thing and get painted. I do of course need to make a crew for it, but I'm kind of working on that. But uh, it's pretty cool. I want to see what that looks like. All black and good to go. I could just carry on adding detail after detail after detail, but you get to the point where actually I'm going to be using a lot of CAC on it, and I think it pretty much says some fishing vessel right now does need the addition of a big ass sump fish being brought on board, though, didn't it? Yes, indeed. Well, we'll see how that works out. Okay, here we have big manta ray type thing being pulled out of the sump with the hook that might paint that wheel quite well right time to um, prime this bad boy I think and see what it looks like yeah let's do that once again the magic of the black spray there it is there's the thing all one model right now this needs more black primer there but then it's going to get a, uh, a metal metal spray over it and then a massive Morn Fang brown dry brush got some crack in there which actually will work to my advantage time to paint this bad boy now fortunately most of it is a big boat that is not going to have been particularly well looked after so a lot of this paint job is going to be achieved with uh, to start off with warp lock bronze and uh, Gehenna gold and um, what's that lead belcher and then a whole load of Morphang brown which is going to add the rust to details and then we're going to pick out details on it so I'm hoping that this isn't going to be too long a paint job we shall have to see painting the damn model can only take place if you actually have paint in your paint pots which is distinctly lacking <sighs> nuts 
Okay. So I'm not entirely sure how we're going with this um, paint job as yet. Because I think I probably went about it at the last about face kind of way. I uh, started getting grotty straight away. And I think I should have painted the boat what colours it should have been before I messed it up. But um, it's had loads of different metals, rusty kind of things, and more fan brown. And then I've gone back and I've added known oil uh, in a gloss form, and I've added uh, BL10 green colour, and that's given me. Certain amount of goo, and I've, they've got rise of rust on in places and more like brown. I'm starting to pick out a few details, like um, in the in the bridge here, we've got that little kind of uh, set of air tanks over there that have gone red, and the brown bag on the radio pack, and there's a little green and white kind of like um, dial up here by the steering wheel, um, and a few bits like that on the uh, the crane side of things as well. Um, a bunch of blood for blood for the blood god. Uh, technical effect splattered and sposed all over the place where the large manta rays are being brought on board. And this is uh, what I think I've got to paint next. And then I've got to paint the water. So uh, my cinch screamer, which is being the, the creature that they're catching, these big rays in the sump needs painting. I've got to come up with a way of. Not making it too leery, but making it stand out against the side of the boat, which is mostly rust and goo. So I'm going to go with browns, I think, and then I'm going to highlight that up. So, so um, in some ways, it's a fairly crude paint job. But um, I want it to be grim, dark, and horrible one. Thank you. So from that point of view, I think I'm probably going to achieve that. Certainly enough to get it on the tabletop. I know it's looking pretty cool. They're bound to be painting... Experts and gurus out there who will um, have done a miles better job, but um, I want it done and finished. And this is going to, going to have been a, a, a model project done in a week, painted and on the table. So from that point of view, yeah, it's uh, we're getting there. I'll keep painting and see what happens. I've got to do the water and um, that ray around the other side, and then I think also the uh, harpoon gun needs a bit more attention too. Okay, so now I'm really at the point where I've. Well, I could spend absolutely hours just painting more and more details on this, but I'm quite happy from a tabletop point of view where this model is at. I've got my ray in there, it's got various kind of interesting colours in there, some blue and orange hues and stuff. The water's now painted. Um, so, what I'm going to do at this point is, uh, so it, I can get it onto the table, I'm going to um, use my gloss Mod Podge uh, to Mod Podge over the top of the sump water that will give it a nice kind of gloss shiny finish um, we're going to let that dry and then this model for the moment is going to be declared done I think um, I almost certainly will come back to it and add some more paint detail to it and one of the things it desperately desperately needs is a crew uh, which I think I'm going to have to kit bash and convert up because um, I don't really want to use bog standard necromunda figures. I suppose I could use a few orlocks, they look kind of like fishermen but I'd, I'd like to use some figures that are not, uh, you know, I might kit bash a few uh, Imperial Guard figures if I've got some kicking around. Or... So there we go, this is then my sump fishing vessel um, I'm really quite pleased with this as a little model it's quite a nice way to take a, uh, a toy that I picked up off eBay for not very much and turn it into a quite a cool kind of uh, piece of scenery uh, accessory to go out on the sump it is in desperate need of a crew now so from that point of view uh, I'm going to have to look into that um, but I hope you enjoyed this uh, pretty brief uh, visit to the sump. I now need to make the fisherman's hovel and island uh, out on the sump uh, where this this vessel belongs. So that will be my next Necromunda build. Um, I'm going to start going backwards and forwards between the sump and a couple of other projects. Um, but I want to get 
uh, some sump tiles made up and some, do some cool things out on the sump. And I really, 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 really must make an effort to pay some Necromunda figures. I've got a couple of friends now who are very interested in playing a campaign locally, which is really cool. Uh, and uh, I need to paint some gangs. I've got my enforcers painted, of course, but I haven't got anybody else done. And I need to paint some uh, civilians and crew members. Check out this. I did this on Hero Forge. I want this guy as the captain of my ship. So I definitely need a crew for this vessel, and um, this is one character that I designed in Hero Forge that I quite like. Um, this is my Necromunda Fisheries captain, with a hook in one hand, and uh, I think I will probably I'm probably quite happy to pay. Seven ninety nine, seven dollars ninety nine. What's that about? Five pound fifty or so for that guy for the STL to print him on my resin printer. See how he comes out. So apart from the captain for my sump fishing vessel, I've also made me in Hero Forge for Necromunda over there on the screen. Come and have a closer look at this. This is wicked. Yeah, check me out in Hero Forge. Woo, Necro Timmy. Uh, yeah, I've actually I have actually bought this figure or the STL for this figure and I've printed it on my resin printer So this figure is definitely going to be making an appearance uh, on my Necromunda tables. It's very very cool <laughs> Well, there you go. So thanks very much for watching this Magrathia Build Real Worlds video I hope you really enjoyed watching my latest trip back to the sump and Necromunda and Hive Primus. There's going to be plenty more of that uh, as we go in the next little while. But I, like I said, I'm going to move around between different projects. So, uh, to make sure you don't miss any Necromunda content, uh, make sure you hit subscribe and the uh, the little bell thing to make sure you get a notification to know that there's a new video just for that. Um, you could go back and watch the Necromunda playlist, it's pretty big, there's some pretty big models on there. Um, or just keep watching absolutely everything I produce. Uh, work has kind of got in the way in the last little while and I'm hoping, touch wood, that it's going to as well because you know, um, most of this YouTube channel has come about because I had loads of time on my hands because of Covid and being furloughed and that kind of thing. Um, now I'm, I'm working more. Content might be a little more irregular, but I'm going to try and keep uh, up to my kind of schedule as much as I can. I'm staggered as to how many people were enjoying watching my videos. I'm just about to hit 3,000 subscribers, which would be really epic if I do it off the back of this video, which I'm pretty sure is going to happen. So thanks to everybody out there. Please do leave comments down below if you like this model. Um, if you'd like to see me make wargaming models out of other Playmobil models, they're so cool. I've got two or three things already lined up. Something for Judge Dredd, another thing for Necromunda. Um, uh, if you uh, think it's a crap idea and it really doesn't work and it's kind of like goes completely against the meta of the whole thing, then leave a comment down below as well because I'd like to know what you think. Uh, make sure you give us a like, share, do all that stuff, keep well, keep safe, get your vaccinations, Hope to see some of you next time on Magathea Builder Worlds. And at some point, I'd love to actually get to the point where I'm rolling some dice with some of you too. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.